Hey everybody, George Zanley here. Uh, so today I want to talk about payment processors, yeah, uh, in the crypto space. So, um, you know, people sometimes uh, think that, um, you know, uh, people uh, almost fetishize sometimes the, um, the, the act of paying uh, with uh, a crypto at a, at a point of sale, you know, at a merchant in the real world. You know, that's, that's the money shot, you know, um, and that's, and that's definitely important, you know, because if nobody accepts your, uh, you know, the units on your ledger in exchange for real world items, uh, or, you know, or virtual items that people, things that people value, is that money? No, it's not. Uh, it might be money in the future, but it's not now. But, um, and of course, people are used to like, you know, payment terminals and, you know, swiping credit cards and, and stuff like that, right? But that, that's a bit of an old, um, an old paradigm, I think. And further, uh, payment processors are intermediaries, right? And of course, we don't want intermediaries uh, we don't want too many intermediaries, at least, in uh, the crypto uh, payment flows because intermediaries are vulnerable. Uh, that's where uh, governments can step in and be like, okay, uh, this is where we got you. This is where we get to make the rules. And, you know, you have to take 10% off the top for taxes and you have to do KYC and you have to do AYAML and every transaction over six cents has to be reported to us within 24 hours, blah, blah, blah. all that nonsense, right? So, you know, people, uh, there's some notable um, pay crypto payment processor businesses, um, you know, and I'm, I'm not trying to hate on any of them. I think that uh, you know, these companies have kind of gone out and done some pioneering work, right? Um, and, but I think that the future is really going to be about using point of sale apps that are open source um, and that do not immediately tie into X centralized exchange buying the crypto immediately so the merchant never touches it and taking a, you know, a fat cat level of percentage, right? Uh, because that's, even though that's better than, some, than these crypto credit cards, right? Or these schemes like I've seen in Asia where um, like they, you give the crypto, you pay the crypto to a third party and then, I mean, it's basically, it's basically like just another payment processor thing. Um, you know, even though it's better than like the crypto credit card, right, where the merchant doesn't even know maybe you're paying, you're selling crypto to pay them, uh, it's still not really that much better, right? Because if all we do is, um, you know, spend crypto into centralized exchanges, like it's kind of defeating the point, right? Uh, and also we need to have these economies where the crypto fro flows, you know, let the BCH flow, right? So I, I earn some BCH, I uh, buy some, uh, you know, I buy a dinner, you know, uh, and, uh, and I pay him BCH and then the merchant, um, you know, ideally like maybe he's going to go out to dinner and, and he'll, he'll pay him BCH. And then maybe um, maybe he goes to a fried chicken restaurant, and that that fried chicken restaurant buys his uh, chickens from from a farm nearby farm, and maybe that farmer, you know, he, he wants to accept BCH, and so he accepts BCH. And then maybe um, you know the farmer he needs like feed for his chickens, and maybe the feed store accepts BCH, right? And then um, you know on and on and on like. That's what we need. We don't, this, this, this habit, this stage, this phase of, of like constantly dumping crypto into centralized exchanges and even holding crypto on, on centralized exchanges. Maybe it was necessary, right? But it's time to move beyond it, right? 
So sometimes people get excited because you'll see like um, X payment processor, like, yeah, we got a thousand merchants that now, you know, when you go and pay there, like uh, the merchant never touches the crypto and we immediately sell it for fiat and deposit it, you know, into the, the merchant's legacy banking account, right? I mean, okay, you know, whatever, but like, um, you know, now there's a thousand merchants, right? Now there's 500. Now we affiliated this high profile merchant, right? Now we integrated Bitcoin Cash into this payment processor that does all this stuff. Like, all right, that's not, I mean, I'm not going to say that's bad. It, it, I mean, I guess it's a step forward. It's maybe it's a step sideways, diagonal. Um, but that's not what we're shooting for. That's not what we really need, right? So we're, we're like, what, like 12 years into this now? I mean, it's time that we really start shooting for, for the ideal, right? Like the saying goes, like, you got to aim for the stars to hit the moon, right? Like, you got to aim high. You got to try for the ideal first. I mean, if you got to negotiate uh, and compromise along the path, except something a little bit less today, okay, fine. But you, you, you have to know what your ideal outcome is. You have to have a vision, right? Because if you don't know the direction that you want to be headed in, then people are going to be like, hey, kid, come over here. This looks pretty cool. Give this a try. And then suddenly you're off your path and you're doing stuff that's, that's questionable, right? So that's why, for example, like I'm not interested in, you know, even though we have more than a thousand merchants um, affiliated, um, I don't know how many in Caracas, Venezuela, for example, which is our main city. I'm not really that interested in like turning this into another cryptocurrency payment processing company, right? Because first of all, that would, I would, the incentives would be to go multi-crypto, right? So then Bitcoin Cash is just one of many, right? Um, and then... Um, and then I become an intermediary, right? And that compromises everything that I'm doing, right? Because then I, you know, I have to be, you know, sitting at daddy government's door with my permission slip in hand waiting to be signed, right? Um, and then the fact is that, you know, there, there are, um, you know, I have operated adopting merchants in uh, a few different markets where there are these cryptocurrency payment processors and uh, the fees, the fees that they charge uh, these merchants to accept these payments are, they're prohibitive, you know, they're prohibitive. When people, when cryptocurrency consumers, people who hold BCH and other cryptos, when they go there and they're like, well, how much is this, you know, how much is this going to cost me? <laughs> what are the hidden fees, please, sir? Uh, they are not, they, it's, it doesn't make sense and they don't like it, right? Uh, and all of that is because of the intermediation. Um, you know, I think forming crypto businesses is great, but when, when you intermediate and that means you charge high fees such that the value proposition is ruined, like you, you, it's baby out with the bathwater again, you know, you've defeated the point. So I think really what we need to do, uh, you know, and this is, uh, follows up on points I've made before about education is, you know, we need to educate people about what is Bitcoin Cash, what are the implications of it, um, at, you know, how to safely hold it, and what are the options to directly exchange it for fiat themselves if they need to do that? And of course, you know, first option, please try to spend it. You know, just, you know, even if, even if you go somewhere where you know they don't accept it, just, just like ask them, just be like, you know, I have this Bitcoin cash, this thing works great. Why don't you just accept it? It's going to be good for you anyway, you know. Um, but if they have to exchange it for fiat, uh, like, I mean, well, first, I mean, even before that, like, if they don't need the fiat immediately, like, how about any hedge? Like, we need any hedge in a wallet. But that's a topic for another video. Um, but they, let, let's have them learn how to do it themselves, right? So they're not constantly dependent on third parties, right? Dependency, that's, that's not good. We need independent actors here. Um, 
you know, because for example, local cryptos, p2p.binance.com, um, you know, there are other, there are, and there are also centralized exchanges, you know, like Buddha.com uh, or, or Kraken, right? I mean, so that's where I am on uh, crypto payment processors. And I'm kind of tired. I'm kind of tired of even chasing after them, you know, because sometimes you have to chase after them because actually some of them are run by BTC maxis and they're like, they don't want to know the first thing about BCH. So if you flip this whole thing over, this is actually an opportunity for us to remove a point of intermediation and to show how all of that can be done uh, just by learning a few things, right? Which are to the profit of the, of the users, you know? And how all of this represents uh, an actual, uh, you know, competitive advantage for those who, 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 who go this path, the decentralized path, you know? Um, so there it is, and let's keep building Bitcoin Cash.